So I added a brand new handout to the network folder. And if we take a, an overview of it and then we'll do what it says. This particular handout talks about our backlink strategy. Backlinks are one of the most important things that we need to think about nowadays. Let me bring up my notes here and I'll write some notes. Modern SEO uh, relies. Yes, yes. Modern SEO relies or heavily relies on backlinks, also known as inbound links incoming links, basically links to your site. Nowadays the search engines put a lot of preference and precedence on a website that has a lot of links to it. But the caveat is relevant links to your site are valuable not just links, relevant links. Unfortunately, those links from those Russian websites, from those, you know, Chinese websites, from those Brazilian websites that have no meaning to your site, those are not going to help you, and those could actually hurt you. It could hurt you to have traffic from sites that are not relevant. Because as I, said, as I said before, the search engines operate basically under guilty until proven innocent. Um, guilt by association and such. So if you've got a lot of traffic, a lot of links from websites that are bad, the search engines will then say you're a bad website. Because there's so much spam nowadays that it's easier for them to do it that way. And then for you to get out of that you know, whole of negative SEO could be difficult. So I'm bringing up Google Analytics and the Webmaster Tools for us to see what's our traffic. Oops, I'm getting a lot of b weird traffic from bad websites. How do I deal with them? That's what this handout is going to start to talk about. But the concept is backlinks. Nowadays, the search engines care about quality more than ever. The ranking of your website is elevated when quality sites link to it. Backlinks, then, are very important to create authority and quality on your website, which in turn raises your page rank. So remember on the previous day, we were talking about longevity, authority, and uh, content. Part of authority is that you've got links to your website. Other websites have linked to you. Now, old school, old style backlinks were that I bought, I went to Bluehost and I bought my website and I also bought three other names of websites. And then I linked them all together. And that used to work because when the search engines weren't as intelligent, they would see this website has three links to it. That's good. And the competitor only has one. So we'll rank this one higher. But as time went on, if I could do that, and I'm a good guy, so can the bad guys do it. And they can buy a thousand websites and link one thousand websites to my website. So a thousand links is way better than three links, isn't it? But those thousand links are irrelevant, are spam links. And therefore, the search engines got smarter, and now simply having a lot of links is not so good. It's now having a lot of good um, relevant links. Think about it in terms of, let's say, when you were writing a, an essay in high school or, or college, a big old term paper, you know, a 10 page term paper. You wrote 10 pages, you submitted it, and usually what's the very last part of any good term paper? The bibliography, the work cited, you know, that, that aspect, where did you build your knowledge? Because if you try to turn in a 10-page paper in college without a work cited, it goes in the trash. 
because it's plagiarized. You're trying to pass off it. You're trying to pass off that knowledge as your own, and most of us have have not invented all of that knowledge to be able to write 10 pages. We got information from journals and articles and textbooks and such. We got information which we synthesized into our own words to create our 10-page paper in addition to our own original research and such. Works cited. Very valuable in academia. In the world of SEO, you can kind of think of backlinks as works cited. Because what if my website is so good, what if I have all of this great content, like my blog articles, great articles, great content, that other websites are linking to? What if someone, there's an example again from this client, uh, people look up this, uh, this food called Wheat La Coche. People search, what is Wheat La Coche? And this client gets a lot of hits from that keyword because People want to know what that is, and there are other articles that explain what that food is. But a lot of those articles link to my client's article, because it was a very good article explaining that. So these backlinks are sort of like the work cited, that if you've got other sites linking to yours, that's helping your authority. That's helping Google see and Bing see. They're seeing that a lot of sites are linking to your site compared to the competitor. So in the in the book that I recommend, it talks about this stuff in, in, in theoretical detail and some explanation and so forth. And I'll actually pull up a couple of excerpts in a moment. But before that, there's a couple of screens here I mean a couple of sections, where do I see my backlinks? In Google Webmaster Tools, in Google Analytics, and in Bing Webmaster Tools. All three of them could give you different data. That's why it is valuable to visit your analytics accounts once a month and see what's changed, download the data, you know, once you've downloaded it, you can make notes on it and write it, write on it. You know, you've got all of these screens where you can export. And if I export it, for example, as, a, as an Excel file, I can actually write on it. I can make notes and highlight and color code it and such. If I download it as a PDF, I can really just view it. But in these various screens, once a month, I'm going to say, I'm going to download my Excel data and compare last month and this month. Further, let's say I find where my backlinks are. I want to download the links and compile them into a spreadsheet where I can then review them, color code them, make notes, and all of that. So then what I can do is either deal with the good backlinks or the bad backlinks. And there's probably a term for it, but the way I like to call this with your good backlinks, you're going to hype your links. You're going to make them better. You're going to make them work for you more. Now that you have a backlinks report, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to the links that link to your link. So what I'm trying to say here is when I'm in Google Analytics or Bing, and I'm in this screen here, that my handout says that I that we saw here referrals and I'm seeing there's an article from the LA Weekly hey that's a big famous real website that we did not pay for placement we did not ask them to write an article uh, they wrote some article about you know 99 essential restaurants 10 great flans in Los Angeles so this client ranked one of the 10 best flans in Los Angeles from LA Weekly, a big important publication in Los Angeles. So I wouldn't even know this until I look in the screen. Well I found out a good link. It's giving us some traffic. This is referral traffic. There have been 29 hits from this LA Weekly link that we did not purchase, that we did not write, that we did not create, that we did not fake. A third party wrote 
some article on their website, and I can click here all the way to actually see the page on LA Weekly. And there's going to be a link from their 99 Essential article here, whatever this is, 99 Essential Restaurants, and somewhere here it's going to be the client. If it's, alpha, if it's alphabetical, that's great, because this client's name starts with an A. Yep, right there, number one result. The client, because it starts with an A. It's a little bit of a cheat right there. But that's why so many names in the phone book are AAA, AAA key repair, AAA, you know, quadruple A realty, because A is the first letter that appears. But anyway, this client is on the list wherever they appeared, wherever it would have been great, but they appeared number one just because alphabetically. But this is a link from a real, respectable publication with an active link that will then take them back to the client, free advertising. We did not pay to be placed here. Great, that's, uh, that's a good ego boost. How, does, how do we use it tangibly? Well, what I'm saying is link to the link. For example, tweet about a positive restaurant review. On Facebook, post a link to the blog post that positive, positively reviewed you. So basically, you are going to use your power, which would be your social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, your blog, whatever, you're going to further get the word out about that link. From this client's Twitter account, I'm going to tweet something like, we're so honored to be at the top of the list of the 99 best restaurants from LA Weekly. So I'm going to use all my skills in Twitter, and I'm going to craft a great tweet with the link to this original article. So I'm going to give them some free promotion. The point of that is that some of the 600 followers of this client are going to see that and further share that tweet. That link is going to spread out even further. And as more people go look at this link, they're going to keep getting more traffic back to this client. So you're hyping the link. As I'm saying, there's probably another word for it. But the, way, the word I use for it is that. I'm hyping the link. I'm sharing this link even more to f have more people see it, for more people to click on that to give more traffic. Because traffic beats traffic. Popularity breeds popularity. Positivity breeds popularity. I mean, positivity breeds po positivity with SEO. So maybe, you know, Ann Fishbein took this photo. Um, of one of the delicacies in the restaurant, which is crickets. Uh, but uh, Anne took this photo. I could share that photo on the client's Instagram with a link to that article. So all the followers on Instagram will see the photo and like it, but then click the link to go read the article and then further get more traffic back to the client. So it's a feedback. It's a, it's a cycle. It's a loop. That's what I'm saying about this first section. Once you know your links, do something with them. You know, write a blog post. Somehow write a blog post about how you're writing about, you know, your, the top, the top uh, five Mexican um, desserts. And then in that we mention, and everyone's favorite, flan. And then we've got a link in that blog back to LA Weekly. Some people read that blog on the client's site and then follow the link back to LA Weekly and then further share that and get more traffic. It's a, it's a feedback loop. In the book, if you get the book, the, the Kindle version at approximately location 1150, it explains this a little bit more. And we'll, I'll show you some excerpts about it a little later if you don't want to get the book, but it's very affordable. Um, and uh, right here, the more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. This takes a lot of work, but could pay off. Because again, I'm assuming you've got Twitter. I'm assuming you've got Facebook. I'm assuming you've got something, not just your website. How else are you going to promote these free, this free advertising? On your Twitter, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, whatever. So there's Google, Chrome, Twitter, and Facebook, 
yeah, to some degree. Um, there, there is a little bit of what is, what is known as the deep web, which is that the search engines can't reach every kind of website. Twitter is very open that you can see any tweet. You can search for any tweet. You don't need an account. Facebook is much more closed off. To get anything meaningful out of Facebook, you've got to be logged in. Pinterest, you can see overall most of the stuff there, but it's going to be limited to some point. Instagram is more complicated in that really it, it works on an app rather than a website, even though there is a website, but it's not as full featured. So yeah, the search engines are crawling as much as they can, but there are there is going to be at some point a gateway that it can't get past. So the more content you put out there, especially in more public places, the better. Is the only way you can check if it's a good link or a bad link is to is to follow it. Now you are gonna get a sense of what's good and bad by reading the title of the link because you are going to start to to see that some of these referral links right away such as rankcheckeronline.com now you may have never heard of it but as you look at this month after month you're gonna start to see these spam sites this to me is starting to sound like a spam site that they're probably trying to sell you their rank checking software uh, these can be pretty insidious. They might have something called Google Analytics.biz. And you think, oh, that's Google Analytics. But no, it's the .biz, or it's the .mx, or it's the .ru. You know, it's not the official one. And so there's at least one other one here that I noticed that were not so good. We'll talk about bad links in a moment. But yeah, you'll know which are the good ones and which are the bad ones by looking at it and clicking and yeah you're gonna possibly have to click on some of them like I don't know I can't tell right now right away Zabi, zabiha.com or maybe just in another language that I don't know so I would have to click follow the link and then see and it may be obvious or not so add tiger.tk that kind of sounds like spam .tk I'm not quite sure what that is what country that is but uh, I might um this sounds insidious. YP.com. What's that? Yellow Pages. They're still around. They have a website. Sandiegan.com. Gayat.com. Gayot.com. I don't know. I need to go look at it. Travel Channel. That's legit though. Tapolandia. LA Weekly. So I would have to click on these and further go. I haven't checked this one recently, and I hope I don't regret it, but I'm going to click on this one, and let's see what comes up. But I'm going to have my hand ready on the, on the back button. I'm going to actually follow through to one of these links and see what it is, and then it may or may not be... It may or may not be obvious, even if I follow the link, it may not be obvious what the site is. The original and world's largest guide to halal restaurants and market. Okay, yeah, this is a good one because the food, the meat served there actually is halal. Uh, so, okay, this is a site that seems to be good. It's a free, a little bit of free advertising here. And uh, this might be a good one to further, you know, good reviews in here. Good. So this might be another one to say, you know, put this on Facebook and, and say, uh, we, we have a we, we've got a very nice write-up on uh, zabiha.com. Check them out, and further get more traffic there to get back traffic to the site. Yes. Does your company have to worry that being hacked and your information being stolen, and how do you protect yourself from that? Yeah, that's a concern for everyone, and especially us that we deal with a lot of clients data. The thing about it really is that it comes down to practicing good cyber security uh, and that's a bigger topic than I can really get into right now but that's really about like not using public Wi-Fi you know if we're on if we go to Starbucks don't get the free public Starbucks because there could be someone sitting in the corner over there on their own laptop browsing the airwaves you never know uh, maybe the password the same password that you use on every network if it gets hacked on Facebook, suddenly that same password allows the hacker to get into your bank because it's the same password. It's easy to remember one password, but one password gets hacked, everything got hacked. Uh, 
What about this question passwords where you go in for one password? Those are those are good. Those one pass one password and last pass and whatever they're all called. They're they're useful. Although the the failure point then is if your one last password account gets hacked, then that could expose the other ones. It is valuable to have different passwords to have that password manager, but it's still up to us to practice good security. Because what if people do this often all the time, unfortunately? sending people a password via email. Email by default is naked throughout the internet and so you're transmitting a password out there throughout the world. And it's a bigger topic than we can get into. Uh, you can research it and get more educated. One thing that I will say, I don't want to leave people hanging, uh, you want to get uh, a service known as VPN virtual private network one that I recommend I'm not affiliated with them at all but I use it and I like it it's called surfeasy.com surfeasy.com is one of many VPNs which basically is software that gets in the middle between you and the internet is VPN encrypts your traffic, makes it secure and such. This is not free, but I think it's like $50 a year. And I think $50 for a year of protection is great. And it also lets you apply this to like five devices. So my laptop and my phone and my desktop and everything. This and many kinds of sites like this will provide that security. Oops. Surf easy. There we go. So you have to log into that first and then do all no. these things? No, it's you create the account, you purchase the software, you download the software, and then you install it on all your devices. And what it's doing is it's creating a secure tunnel mm -hmm. for your data to go through, even if you go to that Starbucks Wi Fi. So in that case, you might be safe when you've got some VPN software, such as SurfEasy or the many other versions that are out there. I've been using it a little while. I really like it. It's very secure. This is how you can prevent it to know your location and your language. This is how you can, um, you know, stop those cookies from tracking you. And better yet, this is how to keep your traffic encrypted and safe online. And it's a big topic in the news nowadays, and however you feel about it, obviously I don't want to editorialize, but I believe security and privacy and encryption is important for everyone. And think about it in your case, you know, this is Fourth Amendment stuff here, the right to privacy and such. And so for me, that I deal with client stuff, I don't want their information to be vulnerable. And using a VPN like SurfEasy uh, helps that. For the ultimate protection, they sell this little USB that you plug into any computer and it creates total security. So you can go to the library, plug in your USB there, and it creates your own little secure system, um, which is pretty useful. iPhone, Android, Mac, Windows, etc. So you, you use that at your, um, at your office when you're logging in to your sites and stuff like that? You Yes, but mo it's more for like when I travel with my laptop to the location, uh, to their office, or to the corner coffee shop, or, you know, I'm getting terrible reception in here, but I'm going to log into the network, but I'm going to have SurfEasy active. That's going to encrypt the network. So that's what this is about. It gets in the middle, and it makes your connection secure. And you have to have that little... USB. No, the USB is an extra optional thing that you can buy. Um, it's the physical protection. Most likely you're just going to get the software, the desktop version or the mobile version. And that's just some software that you install on your device, I believe up to five of them, and uh, it encrypts everything. So 
um, we're going to talk about the uh, how you how you dis disavow. Mm -hmm. So on the handout here, we've got what to do with good links, which in the SEO class, I'm sorry, the social media class, we would go into more detail about how to use social media effectively, you know, what to tweet, how to tweet, how to use Facebook, all of that. But in general, I'm giving you the idea that you want to share any, any good, you know, any good... Uh, any good word about you, you want to further share that to help build more good word for you. On the opposite side of the coin, we have bad backlinks, and basically it's the disavow links tool. In Bing, it's much more straightforward. In Google, it's kind of complicated. Because the concept here is, as I look on Google Analytics or Bing, I see that there are links from spammers. I've done the research to see that Rank Checker Online is a spammer. And that could be dragging me down. That could, before, before I realize this, that could be dragging me down because, again, guilt by association. So if most of the results that I'm getting out of referrals are spam links, no wonder I'm not getting any sales from my website. Because there's all of these spam links that the search engines are seeing. If that's a spam link and that's a spam link, you're a spam link. Even though I believe you, you're not. You're, just, you're a spam duck. You're quacking like a spam duck. So, we need to disavow. This is not going to remove the link. There's no way to remove someone else's link to your site. We can disavow them, however. Which means, Google, Bing, don't pay attention to these links. I don't know them, you know, I know them not, I disavow them. Don't let those links drag me down. In, in Bing, if you're logged into Bing, you're going to go to the dashboard and configure my site and click disavow links. And basically you're going to copy the address and paste it and, and submit it. You're going to tell Bing, this is a bad link, this is a bad link, this is a bad link. It's very straightforward on Bing. It's a little harder on Google because the way to get to the screen to disavow is not even easy to get to. I don't believe I've found anywhere in the settings of Google a place to get to the disavow screen. And you have to disavow, to be most effective, you, you have to disavow on Google and Bing, because both of them are looking at your site. So. Bing gives you a front door. Step in here and disavow links. Google doesn't. You have to climb on the roof and enter through the chimney to get in to disavow links. Because there's no direct link that I've seen inside of Google Analytics. I've got the direct link on my handout right there. And I've also got, if you want to search Google, do a Google search for Google Disavow tool and you'll get the result. There's no direct way. <coughs> Thank you. And so basically, if you follow that link, go ahead and click that, since we're already logged into Google. If we click that, it'll take us to the screen to disavow. If you're signed in, then it'll take you directly to kind of a nondescript screen, but it's going to give you several warnings. In my case, because I've got a lot of sites to deal with, it says first choose a site. And before I go forward under more info, there's a big old spiel about what you're about to do. So again, this is not as easy as Bing, and for good reason. Google is the one that has most of the traffic, the search traffic. And if you disavow a link that you shouldn't have, you're suddenly going to lose a lot of traffic. That's like cutting, what is the saying? Cutting your nose to spite your face? If you do it this way through Google and you say disavow that website, and it was giving you maybe two bad links, but 70 good links, 
Now you've lost all of those good links. Uh, so what this is trying to tell you is you have to create a little text document in, uh, in, in Windows you can use notepad so on, on Microsoft Windows you have notepad just plain old notepad on the Mac you have text edit you wouldn't really want to use Word because Word has fonts and a lot of complexity just notepad or text edit Google is saying in a text editor you have to tell us what you've tried to do to disavow which I think this is a big burden because these spam sites they're not gonna care uh, what the what Google is saying you should try to reach out to the spam sites and ask them to remove the link well again good luck a lot of these spam sites have no contact info even if, even if they do their inbox is probably full and they're never gonna see your message but Google wants you to try to reason with the spammers and in this text document you're gonna write you can you can write a comment to Google you have to write it like this the pound sign plus your comment and here I'm telling Google example.com removed most links but missed these so then I simply copy and paste the link that is the spam link into the file Yes, it's a lot of work. And then I come back to the screen here and upload the file. I'm telling Google, these links are bad. Don't pay attention to these links, because I tried to get the spammer to remove them. I can tell Google page by page, which is a waste of time. Mostly you're going to do it by, by the domain. ShadySEO.com is full of spam linking to my site. I'm not going to tell Google remove this page and this page and this page. I'm going to tell Google this whole domain, this whole website is bad. But I'm going to write, I'm going to tell Google contacted owner of shadyseo.com on August to ask for link removal but got no response. What a surprise. So then I'm going to write domain colon the name of the site. So if I was doing this for real again in Windows I would go to the start menu I would search for notepad this is just a plain simple text editor I don't need word it doesn't want a word document it wants a plain simple text file and I'm gonna write the comment here I'm gonna cover the microphone here I'm gonna believe you that you tried to take this to, to take the spammer to task uh, you don't have to really do it because these spammers are not going to pay attention. You're going to try. I'm going to say attempted to have spam links removed on April 1st, 2016. Got no response. These comments that I'm sending to Google, I have to put a, the, the hash mark, the, the number symbol got no response. Any comments that I'm giving to Google, I need to put a, the, the pound sign in front of them. And then I say domain colon bad site dot biz. That's the bad site that's linking to me. I don't have to mention every single link that I found in Google Analytics. The whole site is bad. Take it all out in this format domain colon bad site. How long does it take them to react? It varies, but this is better than not doing it because eventually they'll react. Other people are doing this too, and there might be a pattern of the same site getting flagged over and over. So I'm helping myself and others by telling Google this is a bad site. I can't say how long it takes for it to work, but I, in my experience it's usually been about a month and then after that I don't see any more relevant traffic in Google Analytics from this site. Could be faster, could be slower. <clears throat> but here we're making Google aware of it.
And so I want to save that file, and I would just save it. Notice it wants to save as txt. It's plain old text. I'm not doing this in Word because it's going to want to save as .docx. And that has extra stuff. That has extra formatting and fonts and sizes and such that get in the way. So it wants it wants it uploaded as a plain old text file. And you can do this in Microsoft Notepad or on the Mac text edit. And I'm saving this. This can be called anything you want, but the way I save this as the name of my site. So let's say, you know, Victor's Bakery with the date 2016-04 one. I'm putting the date of my file, uh, I'm putting the date of the disavow in the file. Because let's say I did this in April. And then a month later, um, I'm going to add more to it. I'm going to keep using the same file and leave what's already there and then do the next site. You know, new spam site found domain uh, get free traffic .com. and I and I found that on on May fifth. So I'm going to reuse the same text file over and over. I'm just going to keep adding to it. So I write the text file. I did the research in Google Analytics to find the bad sites. I wrote the text file. I go back to the disavow links screen. I select disavow. It's going to give me another warning. <coughs> this is an advanced feature. Are you sure you want to do it? Because it could knock out a lot of your a lot of your legitimate traffic. You say yes, disavow. It's going to give you another warning. Are you sure? And then I'm going to choose the file and upload it. It'll process it, and in some amount of time, it'll then reflect on my analytics here. It'll reflect here that I'm no longer getting traffic from that spam site. And therefore, Google sees I'm a legitimate site. I'm a legitimate webmaster. I'm trying to cut down on spam for myself and everyone else, and that could help your rankings. That could help you climb up on their search results. It is a big process for Google, not complicated, just a long process. And for Bing, it's much easier. You just log in, go to that screen, add the site, save. That's the for Google. You have to research, you have to write and explain yourself, upload it. Does it? So we still have more to talk about backlinks, how to read the data, how to use our keywords. There's a great couple of excerpts that I want to take out from the book about creating content. Because if we keep saying that those three things are important longevity, authority, content well, you know, I need to talk about content, what to tweet, what to write on the blog, all of that. I'll give examples and advice about content next time. Uh, I've got another lecture about that, but we've got a lot to think about for today, where we've got, hopefully, some data to look at. Good data, bad data, what to do with the good data, what to do with the bad data. And again, I mentioned the book in the syllabus. I would check it out. If not, I'll give us a couple of excerpts next time. Any, uh, as we're getting close to the end of the day, any general questions about what we've talked about today? Yes? It seems like Google Analytics does a lot when it finishes off. Does it summarize and give suggestions on, um, oh, you should put a, a cookie here or it does do that over on Google Search Console. If you go over to google.com webmasters, remember that was one of the three things we set up last week. Here, 
There is a screen about SEO suggestions on a particular account I can go in and it will have it under other resources and other parts as well. Um, Google Index and Bing also. They've got a screen in there somewhere that's, that gives you some suggestions. Now that it knows about your site and it analyzes your site, it might find problems. So somewhere here, off the top of my head, I, I don't see it, but I know it's in here for Google Search Console. And for Bing, it will give you suggestions. Any other general questions? New settings. Can you guide me here? Where what screen are you looking at? So here's my first page here under view. What what view on settings? On admin. On admin? And then on which one? On which which screen? So do you mean this view settings here under the under the view? All right, let's take a look there. This would be the screen um, that we've already set up before, but we have optional things here. This default page, I, I wouldn't quite worry about it, but if you've got multiple websites, you know, which is the default website attached to all your websites? That would be default page, so it's optional, I wouldn't worry about it. Under this exclude URL query parameters, when someone searches on your site, your site will get a certain address. If you would like to remove that uh, from your address when Google Analytics analyzes it, you can. Again, it's optional. So I wouldn't worry about it. Exclude all hits known from bots. This one could show you traffic from the Google search bot, from the Yahoo search bot. If you don't want to see that data, in Google Analytics, you can activate that to not show you that. And then another one, this could be valuable, but it needs some setup, and I can't quite explain it in total. But under Site Search Tracking, Google Analytics could also track what people are searching for on your site. So on a site, on this one. On this site, um, on most sites, there's a search, right? So if I click up here, I'm going to search. And when someone searches something for, like, I don't know, Twitter, the result is going to appear on the top that it's searched for Twitter. My particular site here has the keyword S, which means it's searched. What this is saying is, how is your search set up? It's not going to be S for everyone, so I'm not telling you what to put in here. You need to figure out how your website searches. You need to tell Google, when my website searches, it uses this, this keyword. And if I activate that, Google will tell me that as well. When someone searched my site, this is what they searched for. So in my case, I would type S there. Because my site says that when it searches, it has the S. Other sites say, you know, query. Some say, you know, victor.com slash query equals cakes. And then all the results of cakes are on that page because it used the query in the address. I don't know what yours, what any of yours does, so I'm not going to tell you what to put there. But that's what that does. That's pretty advanced. It's optional. All of these ones that are optional, they're optional. If your site works, it works. But if you research it and look to what they do, you could get more insight. 
And then the last one is if I also select categories, if my site organizes things into categories, what is that category structure to give me even more data? Question. Um, when I went on to the just about the links and looked at the sites that I have out there, um, I have a site that doesn't have a www and then a site that does have it. And it's the same site. So would I have to disavow on both sites? I would recommend that you do it for both, yes, because Google sees it as two different domains, technically, subdomains. So what if I had blog.victor.com and www.victor.com? Google sees those as two different sites, so I would want to disavow them both, so that the non-WW and the WW version, I should do it for both. Over on Google, it doesn't, I mean, over on Bing, it doesn't care. You just do disavow, and it doesn't. But for Google, we have to be kind of specific at times. All right, last question. All right, what I uh, what I wrote here in these notes, and not that one, in my notes, right here, and this little drawing that I made of the circles, I'm going to put them into the network folder. I'll turn the printer back on if you want any of that, and that'll be the today's lecture. When we come back next time, we'll look at more analytics. We'll talk about content creation. We'll talk about using those keywords that we developed previously. We'll talk about advice for plugins, and I'm going to focus on WordPress because it's the biggest one. But whatever I talk about are still going is still going to apply to any kind of site, Wix, Dreamweaver, Weebly, whatever. But I'm going to focus on WordPress. So now I've added today's notes, April 20th, and this Y graphic if you want it. Thank you for coming. Make sure to sign in if you came in a little late and to enroll if you are new.